Introduction Welcome, students, to today's lecture on the fascinating field of DNA analysis and forensic investigations. In this lecture, we will delve into the various methods and techniques used in DNA forensics, as well as explore the challenges and ethical considerations associated with its application in the legal system. DNA analysis has revolutionized the field of crime solving and has become an indispensable tool for forensic scientists around the world. So, let us begin our journey into the intricate world of molecular biology and its applications in the justice system. In DNA forensics, DNA extraction is the first step to isolate DNA from samples. Techniques like organic extraction, silica-based methods, Chelex extraction, and magnetic bead-based technologies are used to remove contaminants and purify DNA for further analysis. Each method has its pros and cons, so scientists choose based on case requirements. In the section on DNA profiling using short tandem repeat (STR) analysis, we learn about the importance of STRs and how they vary between individuals. Through PCR amplification and gel electrophoresis, scientists can compare DNA fragments to determine unique alleles and differentiate individuals. This highly sensitive method has greatly improved criminal investigations. PCR is a powerful technique in DNA analysis. It amplifies specific DNA sequences, making it valuable in forensics. DNA denaturation, primer annealing, and extension occur through temperature cycles. PCR enables analysis of trace DNA from crime scenes or evidence. In this section on gel electrophoresis and its role in DNA size separation, we explore how this technique is applied in forensic DNA analysis. Gel electrophoresis allows for the separation and visualization of DNA fragments, aiding in identifying and comparing samples. Interpretation of DNA profiles involves careful analysis of gel electrophoresis results to determine genetic variations. Bands on the gel represent alleles at specific genetic loci. DNA profiles are compared using statistical algorithms to calculate the chance of a match. Adherence to guidelines and quality control measures ensure accuracy and reliability. Forensic DNA databases, like CODIS, help identify individuals and solve crimes by comparing DNA profiles from crime scenes to those in the database. Privacy, expansion, and ethical concerns are important for these databases. In this section on DNA forensics, we will explore the role of mitochondrial DNA MSNA, analysis. While nuclear DNA is commonly used, MSNA analysis can be valuable when nuclear DNA is degraded or limited. MSNA is inherited solely from the mother and remains stable over generations. It is more abundant and easier to amplify from degraded or small samples like hair, bones, or teeth. However, MSNA has limited power for precise individual identification. Single nucleotide polymorphisms SNPs, are genetic variations where a single base pair differs between individuals. SNPs are abundant throughout the human genome and can provide valuable information in forensic genetics. SNP analysis can be used to determine phenotypic traits, such as eye or hair color, and to predict ancestry. Forensic scientists have developed SNP panels that allow for the identification of population-specific SNP patterns, aiding in the identification of suspects and victims. SNP analysis can also be used alongside STR analysis to provide additional information in complex cases where conventional methods may not be sufficient. However, due to the abundance of SNPs in the human genome, Analyzing large SNP panels can be time-consuming and expensive. Y-chromosomal analysis focuses on the unique genetic markers found on the Y-chromosome, which is only present in males. This analysis is primarily used for paternity testing and tracing patrilineal ancestry. By comparing specific genetic markers on the Y-chromosome between potential fathers and offspring, forensic scientists can determine the probability of a biological relationship. The absence of specific markers indicates exclusion, while their presence suggests a high likelihood of paternity. Moreover, Y-chromosomal analysis is beneficial for investigating cases involving male suspects, such as sexual assault or patrilineal ancestry determination. The analysis of Y-chromosomal markers can provide valuable evidence in legal proceedings. In the section on statistical approaches for calculating DNA match probabilities, we explore the methods commonly used in DNA forensics and genetic fingerprinting. These include the product rule and Bayesian approaches, which consider population frequencies and case-specific information to determine the likelihood of DNA profiles matching. It is essential to ensure the accuracy and transparency of these methods to maintain the reliability of DNA evidence in court. In DNA forensics, challenges arise from DNA degradation, contamination, DNA mixtures, biases, and potential human error. These limitations necessitate strict quality control, specialized software, training programs, and ongoing research for a reliable and effective DNA analysis. 
the ethical use of DNA evidence in the legal system requires careful consideration of privacy concerns and informed consent. Regulations and oversight are necessary to prevent abuse or discrimination. Misinterpretation and potential social implications of DNA phenotyping must be evaluated. Transparency and scientific integrity are vital for fair outcomes. In conclusion, DNA analysis is essential in solving crimes. Techniques like DNA extraction, STR analysis, PCR, gel electrophoresis, and statistical interpretation allow scientists to identify individuals accurately. Challenges like degradation, contamination, complex mixtures, and ethics need attention. With advances in technology, molecular biology and forensic genetics will shape future criminal investigations.